so today I'm going to be going over the notes for biology regents for studying the midterm and we're going to go through unit C and unit D. So let's um, begin. So what is ecology? The study of the interrelations and interactions between living things and their environment. So name the organizations of the organization of ecology from smallest to largest. Species, population, community, habitat, ecosystem, biome, and biosphere. Define species. Organisms with similar characteristics that can reproduce successfully. Define population. All the members of one species in an area. Define community. All the populations in a given area. Define habitat. Where you live. Define ecosystem. All living things in a particular place, the community, and the habitat. Define biome. Interacting ecosystems in a large geographic area. Define biosphere. Everywhere that life exists on Earth. Define autotrophs. Organisms that make their own food. What are autotrophs also called? Producers. What are two ways that autotrophs can get energy? Photosynthesis and chemosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? Using the sun to make your own food. What is chemosynthesis? Using chemicals from your surrounding environment to make your own food. What are heterotrophs? Organisms that need to obtain food from another source. What is another word for heterotrophs? Consumers. What are herbivores? Plant eaters. What are omnivores? Animals that can eat both plants and animals. What are carnivores? Meat eaters. What are decomposers slash saprobes? De they are organisms that decay and recycle materials back into the, into the soil. What are some examples of saprobes? Bacteria and fungi. What are detrivores and scavengers? So organisms that eat dead remains. What are some examples of detrivores? Crows and rats. What are predators? Organisms that hunt and kill prey. Or Harvey Weinstein, I'm sorry, that was awful. Okay, what is the food chain? Um, the path of energy transfer. What does, how does energy flow in the food chain? The sun, to the producer, to the primary consumer, to the secondary consumer. What is a food web? A complex network of food chains in the ecosystem. What are trophic levels represented by? Organisms whose energy sources are the same number of steps away from the sun. So picture an ecological pyramid. We got something like that. And as you can see, the, at the bottom of the pyramid are the producers. Uh, first level, second level, and third level on the top. So what is an energy pyramid? An energy stored at each of the tropic levels. What, are, what is a biomass pyramid? It's a pyramid that represents the mass at each tropic level. What's a pyramid of numbers? The number of organisms at each tropic level. What is a 10% rule? Only 10% of energy taken in is available to the next consumer. What does the rest of the energy go to in the 10% rule? Heat and metabolism. What is a limiting nutrient? One nutrient that is scarce or cycles slowly. What does a limiting nutrient limit? The primary productivity of producers. If there is a large out input of a limiting in if there is a large input of a limiting nutrient into an ecosystem, the producers will undergo a blank number increase. What is an example of increase in a limiting nutrient increasing the number of producers? Algal bloom. What are ecosystems determined by? Limiting factors, abiotic and biotic factors, habitat and niche. What are limiting factors? Factors that determine what type of species may live in a given area. What is a niche? The role or job an organism has in an ecosystem. What is a competitive exclusion principle? No two species can occupy the same niche and the same habitat at the same time. What is symbiosis? It's a close, long-term association between two or more species. What are the types of symbiosis? Parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism. What is parasitism? When one benefits from the relationship and one is harmed. What are some examples of parasitism? Lice, ticks, or of parasites. Uh, lice, ticks, 
athlete's foot, and ringworm. What is mutualism? When two organisms live together for the benefit of both. What are some examples of mutualism? Flowers and insects, lichens, uh, lichens are algae and fungus together. Um, then there's nitrogen, fixing bacteria, and the root of plants. Um, so what is commensalism? That's when one organism is helped by a relationship and the other is not affected. What are some examples of commensalism? Whales and barnacles, bromelide and tree, clownfish and sea anemone. What is ecological succession? A regular progression of a species uh, replacement in a developing ecosystem. It results in stability. Where does primary succession occur? Where nothing has grown before and there is no soil. Primary, okay. So what does primary succession begin with? A pioneer species preparing the area for other life forms. What are some, what's an example of a pioneer species? Lichens. When does secondary succession occur? When there has been previous growth. What is a climax community? A stable ecosystem where succession has stopped. What can alter a climax community? Activities of organisms, climate change, and natural disasters. What usually happens to an altered ecosystem? It recovers through gradual changes back to a point of long-term of long-term stability. What is eutrophication? So that's when too much nitrogen gets into the water and the lake progresses from a lake to a swamp to a field. So pollution ruins your lake, basically. So what is carrying capacity? Carrying capacity. So that's the number of individuals that an, in, that an ecosystem can support at a given time. Okay, now we're on to unit D, woo! What is a cell? So it's a basic unit of life, uh, the smallest structure that is capable of carrying out all the basic life processes. What did Anton von Leeuwenhoek do? He made high power lenses and observed things in pond water during the mid 1600s. What did Robert Hooke do? He observed cork under a microscope and he named the box-like structures that he saw cells. He actually saw the walls of plant cells. What did Rudolf Virchow do? He theorized that all cells arise from pre-existing cells. What did Matthias Sheldon do? He theorized that all plants are made out of cells. What did Theodore Schwann do? He theorized that all animals are made out of cells. What is the cell theory? Just a long one. So number one, all organisms are composed of one or more cells and the cell's products. Number two, all cells carry out the basic life processes and are basically similar in structure. Three, new cells come from pre-existing cells. Four, an organism becomes ill because of a cell malfunction. What are the two major types of cells? Prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Are fungi prokaryotic or eukaryotic? Eukaryotic. What is a cell membrane? A selectively permeable boundary that controls what materials can enter and exit the cell. It is present in all cells. What is chytoplasm? It's the liquid material in the cell, sometimes called chytosol. It contains enzymes and other chemicals that can cause that cause life functions to occur. What are organelles? Those are structures in the cell that have um, specialized functions. They are all found in the chytoplasm of eukaryotic cells. Describe the nucleus. It controls cellular activity. The cell's control center is found in all eukaryotic cells. What is nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope? They're the same thing. So it's a double membrane with pores. What is the nucleolus? Nucleolus. It's a dense area of DNA where ribosome synthesis takes place. Ribosome synthesis. Describe chromosomes. They contain genetic information. They're strands of DNA with sections called genes. What are ribosomes? So they're on the site of protein synthesis. Site of protein synthesis. And they're attached to the ER 
or they're free floating. They are found in all cells. What is the rough endoplasmic reticulum? It's a membrane bound canal with ribosomes on the outer surface and is used for internal transport and synthesis of proteins. That will be and synthesis of proteins that will be secreted from the cell. So they make the proteins that exit the cell, basically. And it's found in all eukaryotic cells. What is a smooth ER? It's a membrane-bound canal with no ribosomes on the outer surface. It's used for internal transport in the site of lipid synthesis. It's found in eukaryotic cells. What, oh, sorry, describe the Golgi apparatus, also called the body. So it looks like a stack of flattened pancakes. It processes and packages cell products into membrane-bound sacs for secretion from the cell, and it's found in all eukaryotic cells. Describe lysomes. They're membrane-bound sacs containing str strong digestive enzymes. They break down and wear out cell parts and aid in the digestion of, sorry, they break down worn out cell parts. They don't wear down the cell parts that we counted for. Productive. So it breaks down the cell parts and it aids in digestion of food, etc. And it's found in eukaryotic cells. So that's the lysomes. Describe vacuoles. They are membrane bound sacs for the storage of materials. Describe the food back the food vacuole and it stores food. Duh. So describe the contractile vacuole. It pumps out water um, dur during it pumps out water during to in order to do homeostasis. Pumps out water. Um, so describe the large central vacuole. It's in plant cells only, and it's a storage area for water in the center of plant cells. It aids in keeping the cell shape. In plants, um, they wilt when their vacuoles aren't full. Describe the mitochondria. Powerhouse of the cell. It's a uh, site of cellular respiration, and it's sausage-shaped and highly uh, folded inner membrane and is in all eukaryotic cells. Describe the chloroplast. It's the site of photosynthesis and it contains its own DNA. It contains the pigment chlorophyll and it's found in plant cells and some protists. Describe chitoskeleton. It's the bones of the cell. Um, describe centrioles. They're involved in cell division of animal cells. Describe the cell wall. It's a rich layer made of cellulose. It is porous so things can leave, but they can't control what enters and exits. It, has, it provides cellular support and protection and is only in plant cells. <clears throat> How do cells communicate? Receptor proteins, which make signals, cell surface markers, which show your cell type, and channel proteins, which let um, messages through the membrane. <clears throat> Describe passive transport. So it does not require energy. Molecules move down a concentration gradient, and it's four small molecules. What is a concentration gradient? So it's a boundary between two different concentrations. It's usually the cell membrane in living things. What is diffusion? It's the movement of, um, of cells from, one, from an area in high concentration to low concentration, and it's down or with the concentration gradient. Yeah. So, what is an example of diffusion? Wait, let me let me check one thing. Sorry. Um, diffusion. Yeah. So it's with the concentration. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> so what is an example of diffusion? So chemicals uh, added to water will spread out until they're equally distributed through the, throughout the container. So that's an example of diffusion. <clears throat> what is equilibrium? So that's when the concentration is equal throughout the system. What is osmosis? So it's the diffusion of water. It's the movement of water from an area where it is in high concentration to an area where the water is in low concentration. And the movement of water from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration. What is solute? It's a material that is dissolved. What is solvent? Solvent is a material that can dissolve another material, so like water. What is a hypotonic solution? That's when the solution is less dissolved, it has less dissolved solute than in the cell. This means that there's a higher concentration of water outside of the cell. 
um, where does water flow in a hypotonic solution? Into the cell. <clears throat> what is a hypertonic solution? A so solution is when the solution has more dissolved solid than in the cell. This means that there is a lower concentration of water outside the cell. <clears throat> Where does water flow in a hypertonic solution? Out of the cell. <clears throat> what is an isotonic solution? When there is an equal concentration of water inside and outside of the cell, there is no net movement of water into or out of the cell. What is plasmolysis? So that's when the chitoplasm shrinks. What is chitolysis? When it's the bursting of the cell membrane. What is facilitated diffusion or facilitated transport? It's diffusion through a specific protein canals. It moves from high concentration to low concentration against a concentration gradient. Um, what are some examples of, of facilitated diffusion? Examples. So there's glucose and amino acids. Describe active transport. So it requires the use of energy. It may involve the movement of molecules against the concentration gradient. And it may involve the movement of molecules that are too big to go um, passively. So big molecules against the concentration gradient. What are three examples of active transport? Sodium, potassium pump, endocytosis, and exocytosis. And describe the sodium potassium pump. So energy is used to pump sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions into the cell. More cells, um, sorry, yeah, so energy is used to pump sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions into the cell. It is used in nerve cells so an impulse can be translated and it goes against the concentration gradient. So that's really what you need to know. So what is endocytosis? It's the process in which a cell brings a material which is too big to bring in by cytosis. What is pinocytosis? Wait, did I say by? Too big to bring in by diffusion, sorry. So what is, I'm just gonna go over that card again. So what is endocytosis? It's the process by which a cell brings a material too big to bring in by diffusion. Okay, what is pinocytosis? <clears throat> It's a type of endocytosis where the cell brings in, makes an indentation in its membrane to bring substances in. So, make an indentation to bring the substance in. What is phagocytosis? It's a type of, en of endocytosis where the cell engulfs the substance by forming extensions of its membrane. And these extensions are called pseudopods. What is exocytosis? It's the process by which a cell releases substances from the cell using energy. <clears throat> How do unicellular organisms carry out life processes? They use their organelles. How do multicellular organisms perform tasks? They undergo cellular specialization or differentiation. Cells, cells that work together for a certain function form a blank. Cells that work together for a certain function form a blank. <clears throat> a tissue. Tissues that work together for a certain function form a organ. Organs that work together for a certain function form a organ system. And organ systems that work together form a organism. And so I think that pretty much covers it. So I hope this helped you. Sorry I was a little bit fast. I wanted to get through this in less than 20 minutes. So hopefully that helped you guys and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be continuing this until we get through all the material. So hopefully this helps you study.